Welcome to my presentation of Unit 2 assignment to the response, the long-term responses of the exercise. In this one I'm going to be talking about the long-term effects on the cardiovascular system, which is going to include the increases in the stroke volume, increase in cardiac output, decrease in the resting heart rate, capillarization, increase in blood volume, reduction in resting blood pressure, dis Decreased recovery time, increased aerobic fitness and cardio and cardiac hypertrophy. First, I'm going to be talking about the cardiac hypertrophy. Cardiac hypertrophy is an abdominal enlargement and a thickening of the heart muscle. This is where it, this happens over a long period, um, long period of exercise, as the walls of the ventricles were enlarged, which will enable there to have more powerful contractions. I'm going to talk about now the increase in the stroke volume. The increase in stroke volume is where is the amount of uh, blood pumped from one ventricle from the heart in, in one minute. Having more, having an, an increase in stroke volume would have would would benefit an athlete as there's more blood pumped out per minute, and having a lower heart rate means that there's that your ventricle will take longer to fill up, which that more blood will be injected from the body. In the increase of the blood in, in blood volume is where the blood, where the amount of blood amount of red blood and more hemoglobin sites, therefore there is a greater amount of oxygen that is being transported. Also they, they, this will allow the them to exercise for a longer period of time and help them to get rid of lactic acid quicker. Having more blood circulate in the body will have an increase in the performance because more blood can be delivered to the working muscle so fatigue doesn't occur. Capillarization is where more blood where more blood flow to the muscles which means that there is no efficient there's more efficient delivery and oxygen and nutrients. This will help the reduction in resting heart uh, blood pressure. A decrease in the resting heart rate. As a long as you as you exercise for a long period of time, this will there would, this would need more for cardiovascular system as the heart will need to get stronger to meet the demands. So the resting heart rate doesn't have to work as hard to supply, body, uh, supply blood around the body. Reduction in resting blood pressure. After exercise a long, uh, for a long time, you, your blood pressure should come back to normal quicker because your body will get more efficient at doing, at doing so. It will also be lower at rest, as, at rest as your body can cope more with the amount of blood pressure having a, lo a lower resting blood pressure which puts less pressure onto the body. Increase in aerobic fitness. This is where it has been an, improve, an improvement of the transporting of, exercise, um, of oxygen and nutrients. It will help remove byproducts of the energy uh, productions as it will allow there to be a better performance for a longer duration of time. Long term effects on the musculoskeletal system. They will have hypertrophy, increase in tendon strength, increase in myoglobin stores, increase in the number of mitochondria, increase in storage of glycogen and fats, increase in muscle strength and increase in tolerance to lactic acid. Muscle hypertrophy is where the muscle fibers become larger and they will increase in size and in mass. It will also help the athlete have more strength and power within, within their, if, for example, if a shot putter was going to throw the shot put, they will have more strength and power to push the, the shot put even further. Increase in tendon strength. Increase in tendon strength is where the, the tendons, is where the tendons, um, Will increase the strong. The, there will be a stronger joints and the more powerful muscle, muscular contractions. This is where the the, car, the cartilage would increase as well as the ligaments and tendons will increase in flexibility and strength. Increase in myoglobin stores. This will help people that do aerobic training as they increase in myoglobin. There will be more myoglobin. Myoglobin in more some more oxygen transport. Myoglobin is a is a substance within the muscles which carries oxygen to the mitochondria. Increase in number of mitochondria. Mitochondria is, is where the energy is produced. Mitochondria is, a basic, is the basis of the aerobic output. The muscles 
can produce more energy at any time. This will increase the fitness and your endurance. Increase in muscle strength. Muscle strength can be can be done by overloading. This is it done by increasing the weight resistance. Muscle strength will increase when you when they are used more. Increase of uh, glycogen and fats. Fats are the main source of energy. In a long period of time, in a long period of exercise, this will you they will use the fats as fuel, which would increase. Athletes can use fats as their main source of energy. Long term effects on the respiratory system. Increased in vital capacity, increase in mini, in mini uh, ventilization, increase strength and respiratory muscles, um, increase in oxygen diffusion rate. An increase in vital capacity is where the amount of oxygen, amount of air that is exhaled and inhaled. As vital capacity is increased, the faster it will remove the waste products. When the lungs increase in size, the vital or the Increasing size in vital capacity in their vital capacities. This is this would benefit an, an athlete because there will be more nutrients and oxygen supplied to the working muscles, so fatigue will, wouldn't occur. Increase in in minute ventilization. This is where the amount of of air inhaled and exhaled in one minute. This will show the efficiency of diffusion. There would be a, a quicker gaseous exchange. This would benefit the athlete as more oxygen and nutrients that can be breathed in in a, in a minute. An increase in strength in respiratory system. The, the interco intercostal muscles and the diaphragm will strengthen, and as as a long period of time, the the diaphragm will be able to get more air into the body as the oxygen. Must, will go to working muscles if fatigue doesn't occur. The intercostal muscles can have the thoracic uh, cavity expanded as well. Increased oxygen diffusion. This is where the oxygen moves from the capillaries to the tissues and carbon dioxide moves from the cells to the body. Oxygen and carbon dioxide will start to diffuse much quicker. The capillaries will increase in size and number. There would be a better transport of CO2 and O2. There would be an increase in oxygen diffusion rates going through the wider capillaries. This will help the athlete to transport oxygen, which would allow them to perform a good, uh, a, a good uh, intensity. And the long-term effects of the energy system. There will be an increase in aerobic and anaerobic enzymes, an increase of fats as an energy source. Increased aerobic enzymes is where more efficient aerob aerobic glycolysis a body can buffer effects of lactic acid. An increase in the, of aerobic enzyme is where the my mitochondria increases in size, so there's more enzymes that means that there is that there's ATP can be broken down more efficiently, and the most, and the more enzymes can be break down into body fats. An increase in fats as an energy source. <clears throat> Training means that the fats are stored can be accessed more, more frequently. So more, more the fats, so more fats are stored in the muscles. When glycogen levels deplete, then the fats are used up for energy. It will benefit an endurance athlete as they will be able to use the fats to complete the activity with more energy in their body. This is my bibliography. Thanks for listening.